Hi, I'm Scott Ball. I'm an illustrator. I work in comics and doing uh, children's books. And uh, this is Georgia Ball. And she's a writer and she writes books um, and also writes uh, for graphic novels and comics as well. And welcome to Bounce Off. So Georgia, what are we talking about today? Nice, no, exciting. This weekend was my birthday. Yes, and it was. Uh, in honor of my birthday, we uh, did something that I wanted to do. I just, I've been dying to go to Dinosaur World since we moved back here. I wanted to go to Dinosaur World when we lived in Orlando the first time. So I think this you wanted was to go really... to Dinosaur World since you were a girl. I'm not sure I actually knew it existed when I was a girl, but when I became an adult and saw all of those big dinosaur statues on the side of the road on the freeway when you're going from Orlando to Tampa, I was dying to go to this park. Something like this just kind of emotes um like jurassic park doesn't it like you're just going right through i'm sure that's totally the idea and as you're um as we're going through the entrance i go over to the parking lot and we discovered that it was kind of full there were a lot of people there yeah actually this thing's not that old uh looking it up um so this park opened in 1998 so that means that this was probably capitalizing off the concept of Jurassic Park. And did you know it's not the only one that this is actually a chain? Well, I did because I've had to look several times at um, their website to try to figure out their um, latest COVID rules. So I know they had a Florida one and they have one somewhere else. They have one I in hadn't... Kentucky and they have one in Texas. <laughs> Which they I have one in, uh, in Glen Rose, Texas. And I'm not really sure where that is. Um, still not. Oh, that's up near Dallas. That's where that is. No, yeah. Well, I imagine both of them are pretty uh, hot and experienced. We managed to go on a day when it was pretty good weather. So, um, the the sculpting on these dinosaurs is really quite good. I was impressed by that. I mean, I, I was kind of expecting it to be kind of um yogi bear jellystone parkish and i thought that you know I, they're putting some real money into like developing these dinosaurs and putting some real time into uh building them so that they look pretty authentic i mean it's still essentially plaster or a form of concrete i'm not actually positively sure i'm but, pretty sure um, it's sculpted concrete okay so because they, they are outside like the elements they look kind of like the, the rock structures that you see sculpted around Animal Kingdom. Right. First thing that they, we went into when we got there was the gift shop. So they have the gift shop set up so that you um, can go into it without actually buying a ticket to go into the rest of the park. She's always smart. Yeah, always <laughs> smart. I don't think that's too me. bad. I'm sorry, go ahead. It, well, the whole experience reminded me of the one single time that I went to Splendid China before Splendid China was closed. And it was also this kind of park that wasn't something you'd normally think of when you go down to Orlando. And most people hadn't heard of it and had a shopping center outside of it that for the most part sold pretty generic items. Okay, you have to explain now what Splendid China is because that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> it was a park was. that was in Florida that was um, supposed to be a celebration of Chinese culture. Mostly what it was, was a lot of miniatures. So when you went to the park, like the whole, well, it was kind of like going to Legoland where there's a whole lot of miniatures that were made, but they were made out of ceramic and wood and they were quite beautifully done. Um, pretty difficult to spend a lot of time with in the hot Florida sun. And most of the shows, by the time I went to it, had been closed. They still had the animal show where you could get your picture taken next to a tiger. Yeah. This is back in the day when they had uh, Orlando was primarily just a Disney World location. This is before Universal. So you still had these kind of um, really homemade almost kind of like theme park add-on type thing. Because you had that. You had the house from Xanadu and stuff like that. We'll have to yeah, do a so show that on means that, that later. But this park would have opened a year after I was a cast member at um, Disney MGM. So I mean, I totally would have gone to this myself if this had been open at that time and I'd known about it because I did Splendid China and a couple of other attractions like that. 
Um, but they didn't have, like in, the, in their stores, they didn't have really a lot of merchandise that was created for the park. It was just a, like a lot of green tea in a standard oriental market. This was really similar. Um, the stuffed animals are cute. I, I like the, the, um, the water dinosaurs and I had a big picture of that, but a lot of it was just kind of like fossils and glass and standard jewelry. Oh, and, but that's very consistent yeah. with like the Jurassic period. So, I mean, the, the theming was just fine. I, I thought as far as for the, the gift shop, it was a pretty big size gift shop too. I was, I was surprised at that as well. I, I was really surprised how many people were here. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to say that, like I was expecting maybe eight cars. <laughs> <laughs> it was packed. I mean, there was, a, there was easily 60 to 70 cars there. Well, I'll tell you why I think that is, is, you know, there was a lot of, um, and say maybe families that couldn't afford to have an everyday sort of pass to the big theme parks. They were offering a very reasonable seasonal pass at Dinosaur World and Dinosaur World had a playground and some activities for kids to do. So, and there was a birthday party going on. Yeah, that could be. I mean, the weather was quite good by Florida standards. It was quite comfortable. So, but, but it was neat. I, I think that the number one thing that really makes this interesting as a destination, and you can't necessarily see it from these pictures right here, but you will hopefully, is like the, these dinosaurs are placed in somewhat of a tropical setting. And obviously I think that's going to work more successfully here in Florida than play, there are other locations like Kentucky, because they were able to actually populate these woodsy areas you see behind here with very tropical kind of plants. So you kind of see things like a velociraptor or something kind of hiding in the bushes. And that's pretty neat. I mean, that's not something that's just that easily uh, replicated. They're able to really kind of create this kind of almost lonely feel to sections of the park. Like you're, so you can almost kind of get the feeling like you are being hunted. <laughs> yeah, we'll see that for sure. This is just one I wanted to show off because it's the only picture I have of the playground. Mm. And uh, th that was the only outdoor portion of the park, I guess, other than the mining that required masks. But it had quite a few kids that were playing. Um, it was nice to see it busy and open. Maybe what I particularly liked about all of this was the dinosaurs were built to scale. Yeah. At least to an attempt to. And so you really got a sense of just how massive it would have been to have seen the real thing even if yeah, they didn't always look like the absolute best sculpture you've ever seen in your life. That also is very important, I think, is having these things to scale. That's something that's very unique. Um, there's just not a lot of opportunities to see that anywhere. I mean, you can go to a museum and see some, in some museums, like an actual skeleton to scale, but even that's kind of rare. So th that was pretty neat. And they, they are done pretty well, as you can mm. see. I don't know how they built that one. I mm. know. <laughs> I don't know how they actually got it to stand up like that either. This was, um, we had our daughter got the chance to do the, the mining section because a lot of the, that was uh, the downer about it was, I think they'd gone back to the full price ticket, but there was still a lot of the things that would normally be open with a park that were closed. So they weren't doing the fossil dig. So instead they just handed her a sack of fossils and they weren't doing the cave exploration but they were doing the mining. So if for an extra price, then we could bring her over and she could look for minerals, which was, it's always big with her. And she had fun with that. Yeah, it, it was nice. It's nice to have some ancillary things to do at a place, even though their, their focal point is the dinosaurs. I mean, thinking of ways to do like mining for gems and stuff is not a bad side on to a, um, a, an afternoon like this. So that yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I didn't feel like it was a really expensive add-on. This is an example of just like how lush the environment was. I think they had quite a few of the the plants tagged, so you could see um, what their names were and whether or not they were a native plant or non-native plant. I would say a good chunk of the plants that were in there were non-native, uh, just to try to give it, I guess, an even more jungle-like sensation. Well, that's one thing about Florida is that it, it is subtropical. So you could kind of bring in a few non-native plants and they'll thrive. Just about yeah. anything will thrive in Florida, good or bad. So they were doing very well and it was very dense in there. Yeah. But like you can't, I can't see from this picture, like any hidden dinosaurs, but you can kind of get the sense of how they could be kind of placed 
so that you, they, some of them might seem a bit hidden. They do have them obviously up kind of close enough with signs. You see signage there. So you can kind of identify and learn uh, about the different dinosaurs. And th this is my opportunity to actually learn about a lot of different things that you, uh, uh, that, that, that are not just the standard that you remember from like the Jurassic Park movies. So that was kind of interesting to me. Yeah, they have a lot of everything. So here was some of the ones that uh, Dimetrodon I've probably seen and things before, but Lystrosaurus is completely new for me. So it was a really good thing that they had these plaques up that I could read. And I did read most of them. This one that Lystrosaurus was said to be something that was kind of hippo-like. Like yeah. Squat. Yeah, I, I, I think of like all these dinosaurs just being so creepy to just be around you know it'd be so it's just a real environment to be in that time period with these things and i'm pretty sure i probably would have survived all of eight minutes before i'd gotten eaten but <laughs> that would have been eight minutes i would have gotten to experience being around dinosaurs yeah even the plant eaters are were really intimidating these are two of the ones that were herbivores and it was very large the one with the, the crest in the, the back of its head really big dinosaur and they had some of its families wow here was the one that's going to take care of you after those eight minutes i remember the plaque said that this was actually a juvenile size yeah I, i'm not sure i mean i i saw i don't know if that's juvenile size or not i i i just don't know i mean i i saw other versions of this t-rex that definitely were juvenile size so I, well, yeah I, babies they said this one yeah. was just left his mother. So he would be at that stage when he could be a roaming adult. Well, okay. Well, I mean, he's basically there. It's kind of like apples and, you know, or like yeah. splitting hairs here. But anyway, yeah, that's, so that's the T-Rex. And you can see how big its, it's head and its mouth is, most importantly. And it's, it's interesting, right? I mean, wasn't it interesting kind of being that close to something of that size? And you kind of really feel it. Yeah, so intimidating. You can see a, a size of a person in the background versus what the um, dinosaur would have been to them. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of hard to just picture it. That's why it was so much fun to walk among them. So I'm curious, George, like related to like time frame, like um, when the first Jurassic Park movie came out, what year was that? You're usually pretty good with dates on movies. Well, I was in I mean, high school when that happened. So um it would have been in the early 90s. Early 90s. So this yeah. came opened in 98. So this would have been like four years after Jurassic yeah. Park, I guess. I mean, Probably. it has to be a correlation, right? Well, yeah, they would have opened this because of Jurassic Park. Seems much. like it, maybe. Yeah. Then they even put in some Jurassic Park dinosaurs because, you know, so the Dilophosaurus. <laughs> Dilophosaurus. Um, I think they actually, they think it has frills. I'm not sure if they're really positive about that. They definitely do not know if it spit anything. And that happens in the movie, but they made it kind of look like these could be spitting something. And that's very much movie influential. Then they yeah. even say in the plaque, this was model was created as the Jurassic Park version. Yeah, I think one of the things that I learned that was interesting, and it certainly makes sense, is that there, there's certain factors with dinosaurs that they can pretty much scientifically determine, and then there's other things they can't. One of them is color. They're really not sure what kind of color dinosaurs had, because that's not something that's, I think, that easily attainable from fossils. Um, so some of this is just kind of guesswork on that. And the other thing is sound. There's really not too sure what sounds they would make because you're limited with the information you have. Like, I guess, it, you know, you, you assume based off of things like um, nasal cavities and such that maybe they, they can like blow through or something like that, but there's real no hard evidence on sound. Yeah, and this was a very silent park. Right? For the most part, things are not making any noise. Mm -hmm. So you just sort of have to visualize that. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. I mean, they did not have like speakers running through. You know, dinosaurs like, roar! They could <laughs> so, have. Like, I don't know if that would have been have. a negative. Uh, it could have been lame. <laughs> so I thought that the mammoth section was funny because it was. we had to go out way out of our way on the map to figure out where it was. And we really wanted to see it. 
once you've seen it, you're kind of like, wow, I have, I've seen enough mammoths for a really long time. There were so many mammoths in there and they all look the same. So what's interesting here, you look at this, is like, so this is the one area where the subtropical doesn't really work. So they really feel out of place to me because um, they, they would be more in a tundra or much more northern type setting. So seeing them amongst all these palm fronds and-, and Yeah, I know. Trees, and it, look it how they, they add the little ice bits in there. So we have like, some suggestion of ice. So this was one of the things that was closed. It, normally it would be a place where you could uncover bones inside of, of the sand. And I know our daughter would have really been into that idea. Um, the other one is at the very back, which is behind um, the sign that faces the freeway is the skeleton garden. And that was open because it was just a little outdoor garden. But it was pretty neat to see, and it had all of these reproduction skeletons inside of it. Yeah, it's interesting to see that too. So you can kind of get a sense of things like uh, the cavities in the in, in the skull and such like that. That does make it interesting to me. Now, obviously, to me, if the whole park had been this, this that wouldn't have been nearly that interesting. But no. having a little section of it's kind of cool. It was fun as a nice a little garden. I was reading on one of the plaques that it said that a lot of the cavities were probably to reduce weight. Hmm. So it Seems like they have weight. more, doesn't it? I mean, the skulls are very porous. Yeah. There's a lot of holes in the, in the skulls that way. So yeah, that, that's interesting. I surprised you while we were in there. You didn't know that they'd found a dinosaur with skin intact in yeah. the last couple of years. Yeah, I, I did not know that. That was interesting. So skin intact, meaning it's just kind of like freeze dried or mummified rather. Mummified, yeah. So, um, yeah, that was, I mean, it, it kind of looks deflated, almost like if you took a beach ball and you deflated it and it's <laughs> kind of flat. There's no bone structure to it or anything. But yeah, so you almost kind of look at it and go like, well, it doesn't seem right because it still doesn't have much of any kind of form. But that is kind of interesting. Yeah. Big sack of flesh, but... I think that what really stuck out to me when I saw the first picture of it was, well, that looks like the illustrations I've always seen of dinosaurs where they, they don't really have any exotic color on them. You know, the old pictures of it was just like plain mud brown. And that's really what the, the pictures of the mummified dinosaur look like is this leathery plain sack of mud brown skin. Yeah. But this is the big reason that I wanted to go. <clears throat> I absolutely love like mechanical and man-made structural things that are either partially submerged or mostly submerged in water. I'm totally fascinated by them. And I had heard that these were there. And so it, it, it's a couple of pieces that they had out in the water. And there's one of the fish that I'll show in a minute. I don't really think that's the most accurate plesiosaur I've ever seen. He seems a no. little balloonist. <laughs> you mean with the football body? <laughs> yeah. I commented to a friend that, well, I wish they were a little bit more submerged than they are. And he says, well, I'm sure they can, can't really clean them and drain them. So it's maybe to prevent algae forming. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's probably what it is. Yeah. They would have had, uh, they would have had to really dredge out that space and like put them underneath. I mean, he, they could have actually just built um, the top half of it and had it just planted yeah. into the ground, just not built the lower half. But I, I think that these, to me, these are some of the least successful type uh, design. In fact, this is kind of what I was expecting a lot of the park to look like is something <laughs> more along these lines with like the football bodies and stuff. And yeah. the, the thing in the back that kind of looks like a paper towel roll. But um, uh, yeah, I, you know, I wonder if these might've been some of their first ones Maybe. that they did. This so, one was really cool. This is the one that is like a prehistoric fish. Well, it wasn't yeah. a fish, sorry. It was an amphibian. Yeah, so this would be like a salamander. I mean, it's kind of like a guppy, you know, with that tail in the back. But it, this is like kind of interesting because this has that very basic shape to it, but there's still a lot of detail uh, thrust into that. So I think that this is, I think maybe that's it. I think we're seeing an evolution of their skill with uh, the dinosaurs there from one to another. Possibly. So I, I definitely wanted to talk about this section. They had a sign up on the way in the very back that said, the following scenes may be too graphic for some young children. And our daughter pointed that out. 
and started laughing about it, making fun of it. And she's 10 at this point and nothing is really gonna be that scary, I don't think. But all of the scenes that they picked were pretty ferocious carnage. And I start, it reminded me of going to like one of those um, wax museums where they have a horror section. Yeah. <laughs> That's essentially what this was. So there's all these little blood and opening wounds. <laughs> well, you know what would have made this section even better is if this is where they had the sounds and then they had little mm. wind machines rustling the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked to see some wind machines rustling the bushes. <laughs> this one had like a lot of open bones. Like the Velociraptor so, style dinosaurs. Yeah, and I thought that was interesting too. So there was, I didn't really see too much labeled as flat out velociraptors. It seems like that's more of a genre or, or a general type of yeah. dinosaur. Yeah, they had a bunch of different raptor style dinosaurs, and most of them were a lot smaller than the one that you see in the Jurassic Park movies. Yeah. This one was the one that really blew my mind because they were very clear that this is an herbivore. And so it essentially looked like a rabbit had used its butt teeth to fend off some very vicious carnivore. Yeah, I mean, I, I said at the time, this is what happens when you make fun of somebody's uh, deformity, you know, like a, or, or just like large teeth or something like that, you know. So you, you be careful yeah. what you say or do there, you know. But um, I wasn't sure about this one. Not sure if this one could have really pulled off. <laughs> This one looks well, kind of early one. as well. Yeah, <laughs> the, the parrot. So everyone was laughing at the parrot. I mean, that thing looks like someone came in and spray painted it. That, that's clearly spray painted to look like a parrot. Oh, yeah, definitely. And what's really funny is like the... Joking with that one. The, um, the plaque for it, Sidakosaurus, has this little bit in it that says that... Um, it is known from many complete skeletons in excellent condition from Mongolia and China. It almost sounds like they're trying to tell me, I swear to God, this is real. Yeah. The, Let's take another gasp. The, I don't think that they can determine that coloring from those complete skeletons. So. No, I don't think that's, so either. That's kind of my, I think, I think they looked at the, the form of it and they're like, this looks like a parrot. Let's make it a parrot. Uh, the only thing that's missing here is a bunch of saltine crackers right there. <laughs> Somebody said Toucan Sam. Yeah. So we were finally, you know, I was saying, and then to conclude that um, I felt like by the end of a couple hours, I had seen enough dinosaur statues and I didn't think I'd ever be able to feel like that. Like I'd gone through a day when I'd really seen enough big statues, but I was done. And yet I still said, we should make sure we hit the museum before we leave because I actually knew that there was an audio animatronic section at the end of it. And um, when we got back to the end, like that's when we finally got a few really creepy dinosaur sounds. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I always enjoy kind of museum sections where you can kind of see actual uh, bones and uh, fossils and things like that. Um, I'm, I'm a little weird that way that I just kind of tend to find that interesting to a degree. So I, it is. In fact, I would definitely do it the way we did it as well. I would go through the tour and see all the dinosaurs, save the museum for last because then you have more perspective because this is these are examples of what's in the museum is precisely this kind of stuff so if you start with this it's not going to give you as much of um, a frame of mind reference than if you did I'd save this for the end and the things that they had are pretty small they're not really big pieces they they as a museum don't have possession of really really impressive fossils i think everything's local too this museum yeah. right everything was stuff Mostly. that they'd found in florida which is kind of interesting to me do you think it's odd that we never saw a sloth a giant sloth how did they miss that opportunity so they didn't put one in the park yeah well other than the um elephants the mammoths they didn't have any mammals at all and i just maybe it's just that the mammoths really are are really out of place choice mm. Uh, it makes me kind of wonder if you think about some of the other ones, the other versions of this park, how different are they? Are they all the same or do they kind of pick different kind of subject matter park to park hmm. based on their location? I would bet to, they're a little different. 
have to check that out sometime. Maybe hit one, the one in Kentucky or something. So um, this is the big question that I had at the end was, um, would you want to go back? Yeah, I would. I don't want to, I, I don't think I'd necessarily get like an annual pass and, and go unless you had small yeah. kids. Um, but it's nice to just kind of go and I, I would go in um, cooler weather. Um, so it's a, it's a good winter type event to go to in Florida. And I would pick days that maybe aren't as busy if I can, because just the opportunity to maybe walk around in that setting and more solitude and quiet um, would have more appeal to me. But yeah, I'd go back. How about you? Yeah, it's, it's a nice walk. I think that it'd probably be a couple years before I'd really have a big bug in me to go back. Mm. But um, I really did have a great time and got a lot of really good pictures. And I, I enjoyed the walk around. So as long as the weather was good and it wasn't blazing hot, you see this as being something fun to do again in a couple of years. Here's my last question. What did you learn that you didn't know? Um, let's see. Because I have one. I'll tell you well, mine while you're thinking. <laughs> that was the parrot dinosaur was very new for me. Yeah, but I think that was a little jokey. I'm not sure that I'm talking about more like you learned. So, so here's mine. I'll tell you mine while you're thinking. But for me, it was with the mammoths. I learned that mammoths lived a lot longer than a lot of the dinosaurs did. And in fact, they they've dated the the last surviving uh, mammoths died off in around in the area in Canada after uh, Jamestown was founded. So they, I mean, we had prehistoric animals like that uh, living that late, which I think is pretty remarkable to think that you could have actually seen a mammoth as soon, recently as past 1500. Yeah, it's true. Um, I remember reading that it was saying like, it's a combination of the, the changing climate, getting a, a warmer earth and uh, hunting. But between those two things is the reason that mammoths died out. Um, especially and they weren't really suited for warmer weather for sure. No. Another thing I learned that was interesting is they believed there were vast herds of bison in Florida at one time. Yeah. We say and that I didn't that's kind that. of related to what I learned is um, that I love, absolute love giant ground sloths. I've always thought those were really fascinating that those were really dominant in Florida. That was a major prehistoric animal that they had here in this state. Mm -hmm. I always just associated that with being um, South America. Yeah, I think maybe because that's just where they are now. So well, that's where it, the smaller ones are, but I do know that the, I'm pretty sure that the ground sloths used to have a lot of them in South American region, but they were, I guess, also in Florida. Yeah. Well, I, I as you probably used to be a lot more humid in Florida than it used to be or than it is now so anyway it was fun i do recommend it um if you have a day trip to do in florida you can certainly do it in an afternoon and i i, I very much rec heartily recommend going it's fun um it's best if you do have kids but if you don't um it's still fun to take a date it kind of mm -hmm. is so uh and where is this located we i don't think we ever actually said which is florida is a big state so this is outside of Tampa on Interstate 4. Uh, so it's between um, Lakeland and Tampa, Florida. And uh, there's a big sign for it. It's really close to Plant City. So um, that's, that city that's where it's located. Where the Strawberry Festival is. Where we, our, our previous video when we went to the <laughs> Strawberry Festival. So you can go check that out. So, all right, Georgia. Well, thanks. Uh, that was fun. Um, until next time, uh, I'm Scott, that's Georgia, and this is Bounce Off.